we are going to discuss today uh, on this video about the spinal cord uh, in the spinal cord we are going to discuss uh, about its internal features external features and its coverings okay so what is spinal cord spinal cord is a long cylindrical structure present in the lower part of the central nervous system so main pathway is transforming information from brain to the peripheral nervous system okay what are its features um what is its length weight and what is surrounded with surrounded by so length of the spinal cord it is 40 5 centimeters in male and 42 centimeters in female uh its weight is about 30 grams it's surrounded by three meninges dura mater peripheral mater and via mater okay so what are its borders from where it is starting it is starting from uh, upper border and lower border so upper border will be your uh, upper border will be atlas vertebra okay upper border will be atlas vertebra and lower lower border it ends with lower border of L1 vertebra okay so it children it extends up to L3 okay superiorly it continues with uh, medulla oblongata and inferiorly it terminates as conus medullaris okay what are its coverings so outer covering middle and in uh, as I told you coverings it has a dura mater, acnoid mater, pia mater. So outer covering is dura, and after that, uh, the next to it, dura mater, it is arachnoid. So in between dura and arachnoid, we are having subdural space. Okay, it is not subdural space. Okay. So after dura and arachnoid, uh, after dura and arachnoid, we are having pyometer. Okay, this is your pyometer. Okay, in between arachnoid and pyometer, we have subarachnoid space. Okay, in this subarachnoid space. The CSF will be flown through this subarachnoid space. CSF fluid will be there. Okay. So here, as it as I said you before, the spinal cord ends at the L1 vertebra as conus medullaris. Okay, this is the structure. Spinal cord is going to end at L1 vertebra. This is known as conus medullaris. Okay. So here we have this pia matter after finishing at the L1 vertebra this pyramatic continues to the coaxial region as a thin fibrous cord so this structure is known as filium terminale okay this is known as filium terminale so what we have what are the enlargements of the spinal cord? Two enlargements we are having. Uh, one is cervical enlargement. The other is why these enlargements are there? This supplies more nerves to the skeletal muscles. So cervical it gives to upper limb and lumbar enlargement gives nerves to the lower limbs so that's why this both enlargements helps in uh, helps to give more number of nerves to the skeletal muscles of that area okay so maximum is uh, c4 to t1 uh, to be precise 
more maximum enlargement can be seen at C6 segment. Okay, in lumbar also from L2 to S3, maximum enlargement of the uh, lumbar enlargement is seen at S1. Okay, so uh, so at the end of this panel cord, we have dorsal and ventral no roots. So dorsal and ventral nerve roots of right and left side will form uh, from L1 to L2 to L5, S1 to S5 and coaxial one nerve lie almost vertically around phileum terminal. So this is your phileum terminal. This is your phileum terminal. So this around this structure, this forms horse tail pattern. Horse tail pattern. This is this pattern is known as this this nerve roots along with phylum terminal. It is called as coda equina. Okay. So let's discuss about external features of this spinal cord. So when we uh, cut the spinal cord so we are going to see this structure okay first we will discuss about uh, gray matter and white matter so gray matter is present in between the spinal cord so this is here we can see the gray matter okay this is the gray matter and this is the white matter of the spinal cord okay so in the gray matter we have anterior horn posterior horn posterior horn anterior horn and central canal central canal is surrounded by have ependymal cells in the central canal csf will be flowing in the central canal okay so let's discuss the external structures of the spinal cord so coming to the external structures uh, posteriorly we have posterior median septum Anteriorly, we have anterior median fissure. Central, we have central canal. Okay. The gray matter laterally, we have lateral horn, anterior horn, and Posterior horn, okay, and posterior horn. This laterally we are having sulcate. Posterior lateral sulcate. We name it as posterior lateral sulcate. Anteriorly we name it as same it as same as anterior lateral sulcate. Okay, so. We will discuss clinical anatomy of these features. Okay, conus medullaris, as we had discussed before, it is the end part of the spinal cord. Injury to this segment um, causes certain effects on our body. Okay, so the first effect it is bowel and bladder involvement will be there. Okay, bowel and bladder involvement. anesthesia in perineum and sexual functions are impaired okay these are the features of conus medullaris syndrome okay what happens to the coda equina damage to the coda equina this is lower motor neuron type of 
paralysis. Root pain is the important symptom. Pain is the important symptom. Why? Because it involves dorsal nerve roots. Dorsal nerve roots. Okay. Bladder and bowel involvement, it's late. Bladder and bowel involvement is late. Okay. So, uh, poliomyelitis. Poliomyelitis. We will discuss about poliomyelitis affecting the spinal cord. It is, it is a viral disease, no? It is a viral disease. It involves anterior horn cells. Anterior horn cells leads to flaccid paralysis. Leads to flaccid paralysis of the affected segments. And it is also lower motor neuron type of paralysis. Okay. Next, uh, coming to the clinical anatomy, the last one we'll discuss about the tapes dorsalis. What is it? Uh, it occurs. Uh, it is a degenerative lesion of dorsal nerve roots and posterior white columns. Okay. It's the effect of dorsal nerve roots and posterior white columns. It occurs in the tertiary stage of syphilis. What are its features? Okay, it's a degenerative lesion. Uh, its feature is severe nerve pain. Severe pain in lower limbs. Severe pain in the lower limbs it mainly affects lower thoracic and lumbosacral segments so here is a uh, tapes dorsalis it affects dorsal column as well as dorsal column as well as dorsal nerve root and poliomyelitis it affects anterior horn cells okay thank you